Welcome to practice. So we're going to start today sitting and if you're comfortable kneeling, take a kneeling position. Otherwise, uh, sit with your feet out in front. You could even sit on a chair. If you sit at the front edge of the chair, so you're supporting your spine, not the chair, supporting your spine. Mm. Taking a few deep breaths and letting your attention gather to yourself. Feeling the sound of your breath. texture of your breath. The feeling of the ribs expanding and contracting. The feeling of your spine lengthening. And then we're going to start to take the spine around the pelvis in a circle. A gentle movement, and as you start to move each of those. Joint between the vertebra. Maybe you might notice some crunching or resistance. Maybe it feels really pleasurable. Or in the other direction. Just paying attention to what is present. and back to center. We're going to take the arms from side to side at around shoulder height. And because you're sitting, the hips are pretty much in place. So where we're moving is the ribs. Like the front and back ribs. And what that movement is like. What the movement of the neck. Feeling the flow of your breath. Good. Come back to the center. Arms out from the shoulders at shoulder height. Arms up and little circle. Reaching <laughs> the thumbs as far back as you can. Mm. You might feel the activation of those muscles, the skin between the shoulder blades. Feel what the rib cage is doing. Give plenty of support with the front core of the body so your spine feels like it's uh, in a healthy position. Lengthening, You're not squashing it, lining your breath. You might start to feel some of that muscular fatigue in your shoulders. See if you can keep your neck relaxed. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Reach your arms behind you. And hold your elbows, make a little back bend. Thing. Feel the belly lift, the elbows reach down, the sides of the neck lengthen. 
breathing deeply. Um. And then releasing. And we're going to take an all fours position. Just so you can come into downward facing dog pose. So tuck the toes under, lift the knees away from the floor. Mm. Bend the knees and lift the heels. Let the shoulders move forward a little and then move the chest towards the leg. I'm going to do that with the breath. Inhaling forward and exhaling. Chest moves towards the front of the leg. Inhaling, shoulders forward a little. And exhaling, chest towards the front of the legs. Keep going. Fingers out wide, pressing each fingerprint, the base of your index fingers, just checking that your elbows are a tiny bit bent and you're pressing out just above the elbows. So the upper arms are toning. Mm. Good. Hold the hips back now, the armpits long, and press your left heel down to the floor. Bend your right leg. We're going to hold this for a few breaths. Let the head just hang down. Feeling the flow of your breath and that big resistance in the back of the left leg, pressing the heel. Good, and the second side. Good. And then we're going to walk the feet forward and try to press the heels down as you walk forward. And when you get stuck or run out of room, roll up and take your arms up. Urdhvahasana and Tadasana. Mm, nice. Stand at the front of your mat into Chardasana. If you like to have a chair handy, now's a good time to have one. You can have the seat of the chair on your mat and you can put your hands on the seat of the chair instead of on the floor. Then you can pay more attention to the form of your body, keeping your legs parallel, your feet parallel as you step forward and back. Mm. Inhale, arms up, Urdhva Hastasana. Feel the sides of the body lift. And Uttanasana, but keep your back relaxed. You want to feel like the bones of your spine are reaching towards the front of your torso. So the skin is relaxed there. But really straighten your legs. So bend your right knee and straighten the left. Mm. You're going to hold it. Found this the holding really effective with stretching the hamstring. And that happens when you really pay attention to the resistance. Let your focus feel what that is, even if it's uncomfortable. So long as your back feels relaxed. Good, and then we'll do the other side. So the right leg straight and the left leg bent. Checking in again with your spine, your lower back. How can you relax there a little more? Really straight in the right leg, really straight so you can feel that big resistance, the big sensation of stretch, whether that's comfortable or uncomfortable. Mm, and then both legs.
Good. And then we're going to walk the feet back into our downward facing dog pose again. All right. Fingers out nice and wide. Press both heels down now. And then walk your feet far enough forward so it might be a shorter distance than you would normally take until you can get both heels as close to the floor as possible. And then we're going to feel that big sensation of stretch again. As you press your heels down, it's probably lower in your legs, more around the calves, but lift the sit bones and you'll feel the stretch higher in the back of the legs. Stretching the heels down, lifting the sit bones, opening the chest towards the front of the leg. Mm, very good. Great. Now we're going to walk the feet back and then come into plank position, but try to press your heels back. And we're trying not to sag the hips down. but lift the front core of the body. Now the elbows are a little bit bent and you're pressing out just above your elbows, your upper arms. Press your fingerprints. Nice. And then we're going to lower down into the whole body onto the floor. Mm -hmm. Good. Bring the forearms underneath your shoulders. Got a little back bend. Legs parallel, press the tops of your feet down. We're going to sway a little bit from side to side. The torso. Press the tops of the feet, lift the kneecaps. Good, hands back underneath the shoulders. And we're going to peel ourselves up off the floor, tuck your toes under, and come back into your plank position. Mm, nice downward facing dog pose. Press your heels down. If you like that feeling of getting more stretched down the whole back of the legs, bring the feet forward a little bit, pressing the heels, lifting the sit bones. Let the head just hang down. Mm, good. And then we'll walk forward. Try to press your heels down as you walk forward. When you run out of room, rolling up. Arms up. Hadasana. Urdhvahasana. Uttanasana. Keeping your back. Relax and go for that really big stretch in the back of the leg. Take your focus right there. Sit bones lifting. Kneecaps lifting. Mm, good. And then we're going to walk the feet back into downward facing dog pose. Only so far as you can get, keep your heels really close to the floor, or even on the floor. But open the chest towards the front of the legs. Fingers out wide, press the fingerprints. Mm. Good. And then take the feet back a little bit further and come into plank position. Lifting the front core of the body. Elbows a little bit bent, press out just above your elbows, lifting the front core. Beautiful. We're going to lower down. Try to lower down without touching the knees to the floor <laughs> as much as you can. Uh, I had to put my thighs on the floor first. Ah, good. Now, either forearms under the uh, chest or shoulders again. If you want to make a little bit of a stronger back bend, maybe your hands are on the floor. The further forward they are, the less of a back bend. So don't crunch your lower back. It should just feel like you're getting a really nice lengthening in your belly and your front rib. And we're going to sway a little bit from side to side. Press the tops of your feet. Good. 
feeling all those little movements of the spine as you lift the breastbone. Mm. Nice work. We're going to put the hands back under the shoulders, tuck the toes under and lift yourself up into plank position. Good, downward facing dog pose. Walk your feet forward enough to put your heels down. Ah, let the chest open towards the front of the legs. Let the head hang down. Mm. Good. And then little steps forward. Heels down, heading down with each step. Patting the feet, appreciating that flexibility in your feet. When you run out of room, rolling up. Urvahatta sama and tada sama. Um, inhale, arms up. And uttanasana, easy spine, really stretch your legs. Great. Now we're going to step the left foot back for trikonasana. So you want about your own leg length distance between your feet. Put your hands down on the floor still or hold in the seat of your chair. Good. And we want to really feel the feet. So feel across the balls of your feet, lift the toes up, put them back down. Good. And try to get your legs straight, kneecaps lifting. Put your right hand on your right leg and we're going to lift the torso now. Roll back the left hip, roll back the left ribs. Bring the left arm up towards the ceiling and then reach the left arm back and feel what happens in the rib cage when you do that. Mm. Feel the heart shining upward. Hello, sky. Uh. Beautiful. And then bring your hands back down onto the floor. We're going to step forward, lift up and balance on the right foot. Now you can have your tiptoes on the floor or lift your foot up or even hold your knee or your foot, whatever you feel is appropriate for your balance this morning. And put a little bit more wobble into the standing foot so that the torso remains a little more still in space, a little more activity in that standing foot. Good. And then releasing that side. Oh. Adasana. Urdhvahasasana, Uttanasana, easeful spine, really stretching your leg. Right leg back, or Trikonasana, so lining up your feet. Keep your hands on your support just as you get your feet really organized here. And then straighten your legs, lifting your kneecap. Good, we're going to lift up enough so you can put your left hand onto your left leg, your right hand on your right hip. Roll the right hip back, the right ribs back, and then raise your right arm. Good, and then reach the right arm back. Feel the rib cage move. The right ribs move back. The right hip moves back. Open the heart towards the sky. Hello, everybody up there. Ah. Ah. Beautiful. And then we're going to release and uh, put the hands back down onto the floor. Good. Ready to step forward. Lift up and balance onto the left leg. Put a, be prepared to put a more wobble into your standing foot and leg 
so that you can be a little more still in your torso. Hold the way that you're going to hold. So that might be holding your knee or holding your foot, or you might have your tiptoes, right tiptoes on the floor. Ooh. Good, and then releasing. Inhale, arms up, and Uttanasana. Step your left foot back, just like we did before for Trikonasana. Lift up into your Trikonasana posture. Mm -hmm. All right, and we're going to try our half moon balance again. Left hand on your left. And what we're trying to do is balance on the right leg, but we're going to keep the hips, the front of the hips, facing that long edge of the mat. There's a few ways we can do that. Just Practice lifting up your back foot for a moment. You can lift up and land back, but then try and lift up and hover. Ooh. You might find that you can catch your balance on your front foot, and then we're going to lift that left hip again. So if you bring your hands to your hips, it will help you. Think about the pelvis, the position of the pelvis. Be prepared for that right foot to wobble. You can put your back foot down as many times as you need to. If you really catch capture your balance, <laughs> try lifting the left leg up. Whoa. <laughs> no balance. Or well, some balance. Good. Being playful. <laughs> Great release. And let's see, to come forward, let's turn to the front and step forward and just balance facing forward. Bring the left foot in front. Take a hold, so that might be tiptoes on the floor if you need to do it that way, or knee or foot. But this time we'll take the knee out to the side. Mm. Take the knee out as far as you can without um, Bringing the right hip forward. Noticing those micro movements in your right foot. Beautiful. Come back to centre and release. Padasana. Urdvahasasana. Mm. Uttanasana. Mm. Right foot back into Trikonasana. Good, and lift up into your Trikonasana pose. So left hand on the left leg, right arm lift up. Mm. Beautiful. Put your right hand on your right hip. We're going to try and lift up that back foot and balance on to the front foot. So you might be walking the back foot in a little bit, the right foot in. And practice hovering on the left leg. But at the same time, if the ha both hands are on the hip, we want to turn the, uh, the front of the hips so that they're facing the long edge of the mat. So the right hip is rolling back. So you might be able to hover there. Maybe you can lift your leg higher. Be prepared for the left leg to be moving to be reacting always you can land back if you need to so even if it's many little steps just moments of balance but trying to lift the right beautiful come back into trikonasana Facing the front of the mat, and we're going to step forward and lift up and balance. 
Now, this time we're taking the right knee out to the side. So if you're holding your knee, take the leg out that way. If you're holding your foot, take the leg out that way. Ah. And if you are holding your foot, you've been trying to do that, don't be afraid of that big stretch in the back of the leg. Let your standing foot adjust. Beautiful. And then releasing. We're going to... Um, we're going to take a seat and let's practice sitting <laughs> and standing without using your hands. So the first part of that is keeping your heels on the floor when you squat. So if your knees don't allow you to sit all the way down onto the floor, you can do the same thing sitting to a chair and then lifting up by pressing your heels and using the core. Otherwise, try to keep your heels on the floor. Mm. And really press into the heels, lift the pelvic floor, oh, lift the front core of the body, and lift up. Try squatting a couple more times. Oh. Um, I didn't say I've got my feet a little bit wider than my hips and toes out a little bit. If the toes go in the direction that the knees go when you squat, it's easier on the knees. Of course, you don't want to be hurting your knees doing these postures. You only go so far as your knees say, okay, I'm okay with that. Oh. Mm, good. And then sitting all the way. You might need to use your hand your wisdom for that. That last little bit. <laughs> A leap of faith. All right. Hmm. More on hamstrings. I think we'll lie down. So when we're balancing, and I know everyone's improving at the standing balancing, mm, the restriction in generally the hamstrings to be able to hold your foot is what stops that next um, next ability, new ability. All right, so let's start with the legs bent, feet hip width, legs parallel, or bend in the right knee, and make space in the front of the right hip. It's appreciating that you can make Beautiful movement. Mm, back relaxing. Everything else relaxing. Great. We're going to keep the knee nice and close to the chest and then uh, start to bring the sole of your foot, right foot, so it faces the ceiling or is parallel to the ceiling. Good. But notice how the knee wants to pop away from the chest. And we want to make space at the front of the hip and bring the knee in really close. Good. So we might be encountering that big stretch in the back of the leg. Breathe. And accepting that that's how the body is here. We have to have that kind of tension, that kind of Stretch, reflex, protection, paying attention to it. Good. And then we try to straighten the leg from there, but without bringing your knee away from the chest. So you'll discover a whole world of <laughs> intense sensation. Take your Focus really close to that sensation. Notice where you can stretch more or where that's enough. You're exploring with compassionate 
curiosity. Maybe you've got your leg straight and then you can try taking your left leg out to straight as well. But keep your right knee as close to your chest as you can. Ah, beautiful. We're going to hold the leg. Try to keep the knee close to the chest. We'll take the leg, the right leg, out to the right side. And stretching there. Mm. And then across your body to the left side. Making space, feeling relaxed, even though there's an intense situation with the leg. Beautiful. Back up to center. Good. And then releasing that leg. Oh. <laughs> All right. Bending both legs. And we'll hug the left knee again. And the first thing we want to do is just make space. Hmm. In the front of the left hip, around the shoulders and the neck, feeling the length of the spine supported. And notice where your knee um, reaches to, towards your chest. I'm going to try and keep the knee there and then bring the sole of the foot parallel to the ceiling. Hold where it makes sense to support the action, but keep your shoulders relaxed. Making space. Where can you be more relaxed? Good, and then we're going to make it an intense situation where you try to straighten that leg. Ah. But still making space at the front of the left. Hmm. Feeling the flow of your breath. Letting both the intense sensation and the ease that's in your body in other places exist together. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see if the right leg will go out straight. You can always keep it bent. That works better for you. We're going to take the left leg out to the left side. Maybe it'll straighten even more. And then over to the right side. Maybe it'll straighten even more. Try and keep your knee close to your chest. Oh, beautiful work. And then release, let both legs out for a moment. Just <laughs> let yourself be really floppy. Ah. Nice work. All right. We're going to take bamboo pose now. So you put a blanket underneath your hips. So if you bend your legs in, lift your hips, slide a blanket in under your pelvis. Now the blanket should assist you to just balance your knees into your chest. If you feel like you're having to hold your legs with your belly, it's not the right pose. Or maybe your blanket's not in the right position so you can always adjust higher or lower and if you're still struggling then do this with your feet on the floor and your hips on the floor yourself ease 
Otherwise, take your legs up, you're in bamboo pose. Now we're going to take the arms overhead to begin with. And just assessing how your shoulders feel. Do the back of both arms reach to the floor? Maybe not. So pay particular attention, particularly if the arms feel a little bit uneven, to the arm that doesn't quite reach as thoroughly to the floor, to the shoulder and the chest. Wash the joints with the breath. Tune in to the fluid nature of your body and your joints. We're going to move the arms into cactus arms to so try and keep your elbows on the floor, the backs of your hands on the floor. Move slowly. And again, assessing this movement and where you might feel restriction. Letting the breath wash, particularly that part of the body. Good, and then releasing legs and arms. We're going to bring the inside edges of the feet together, knees together, arms out from the shoulders. Let's use the core of the body to move the legs. So bring the feet off the floor as you inhale shift the hips to the right and using the core to lower the knees gently towards the floor. Look over your right arm. Hold the legs and the feet just off the floor. Use the core of your body to lift, to lift the hips, swing them left and then using the core of the body to lower the legs gently to the right side, turning to the left. Coming back up. Mm. Keep going from side to side. Ah, oh, beautiful. Coming back to centre, hugging your knees in and rocking a little bit from side to side. Ah. Put your feet on the floor for a moment. Hands on the belly. Feeling the breath.
people who'd like to stay for the relaxation, you can let your legs slide out and adjust your spine. People who need to finish your practice, rolling to your right side, feeling the flow of breath, the fluidity of your body come up to sitting. Namaste to you. Or Shavasana, making any more little movements to flatten the rib, uh, the shoulder blades against the rib, yeah. the spine long, the legs rolling out. The upper arms rolling out, arms up. Feeling the flow of your breath. And as each place in the body is mentioned, feeling what you feel. Pose. Soles of the feet. R2, tips of the feet, ankle, lower leg. Knee, thigh, hip, belly. buttocks, lower back, middle back, Back rib, shoulder blade, shoulder, arm. 
armpit. Front rib. Upper arm. Elbows, forearm, wrist, palm, thumb, finger. Back of the neck, throat, scalp and skull, forehead, around your eyebrow. Around your eye, nose, mouth, lip, tongue, jaw. Feel what you feel. Your whole body. Breath by breath. Feel your body being still and start to make little movements, fingers and toes. With compassionate curiosity. And then wiggling your hands and feet, bending your arms and your legs in. And rolling to your right side. And when you're ready, come up and have a seat. Hands in front of your heart. Feeling the flow of your breath.
Namaste.